Welcome to another Coding Like Mad MATLAB video. In today's video, we are going to learn how to read data from video files. There are a lot of other tutorials out there on this subject, but most of them are actually pretty badly out of date and actually give incorrect information for MATLAB 2018. So I thought, since I'm making code using this type of functionality, I would make my own take on it that's up to date for the current version of MATLAB. After you're done watching this video, you should be able to read video files using standard codecs, display the frames, and manipulate them as images. If you would rather learn how to write video files, I explain how to do this in a video which I link here. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We post new stuff like this basically weekly. All right, to get started, we're going to look at the core object that we use when we're reading a video file. That core object is called the video reader object. So you create a new one, just like so. We make a video reader constructor, and then I've put a file here called issvidconvert.mp4 in the same directory as uh, the script that I'm running. So if we run this, you can see everything ran perfectly happily. So what exactly is this object? Well. The core idea is we basically have an interface for talking to the video. So when we want information from the video, a frame or something about the codec, we go to this object. So to get an idea of this, let's take a quick look at what's in it. So vid here is a video reader and it has some properties. It has uh, the name of the file, issvidconvert.mp4. It's located in my MATLAB folder in a folder called video reader tutorial. And then it's 72 seconds long, and it has a current time of 0.1667 seconds. So here is one of the main differences between MATLAB 2018's implementation of Video Reader and some of the other tutorials I saw that are based on earlier versions, and that is everything in the Video Reader object is done according to timestamp. So you need to know where in the video you want to go, not which frame, but when. So we also get some video properties, the width of the video, the height, and the frame rate, the bits per pixel, and a particular video format. So this particular video is from the International Space Station, and it's just a nice video of the continent. How do we go ahead and manipulate this object? Well, first of all, you can see it has this current time property. So I can set that to other, t other values, for example. This video is 72 seconds long. Let's go ahead and put it halfway through, which is the 36 second mark. When I did this, it actually moved itself to the center of the video. If I look at the video object again, you can see current time is now 36 seconds. Depending on uh, what value you put here, it will actually advance to that particular frame. In order to manipulate this object, it has a number of methods as well. And we can take a quick look at those by typing the object, a period, and then the tab. And you get a drop-down menu with many different methods as well as the properties that allow us to manipulate this object. So we can, for example, grab the frame rate, which we know should be 11.9 frames per second. And there it is. Just as usefully, we can, for example, use a has frame method. What this will do, is when we run this method, it returns true or false. When it returns true, this is letting us know that there is still a frame waiting in the video reader object. That is, we're not at the end of the video yet. In the past, you would have, for example, looped until you hit the end of the video. Here, what we're doing to measure the end of the video is instead of looking at, are we at the last frame? We're just asking, do you have another frame? So how do we get a frame? Well, that's pretty straightforward. We can use a the vid method, and then we tell it uh, that we would like to read a frame from the file. That's it. So I tell it that my frame, we'll call it my vid frame, is equal to that. And then we're going to take a look at how big this thing is. So the vid frame is an object of size 1080 by 1624, and it has three channels in it for red, green, and blue. And if I look at the workspace, I can see that the vid frame is a uint 8. So what that means is red, green, and blue are each represented by an 8-bit integer. 
Okay, so what did we just read? Well, the easiest way to tell that is to create a new figure. And then I'm going to use the im show command on the vidframe object, just like this. And when we do that, the following figure. So this figure is the very first frame of this video. Now, as you can see, I got it from the NASA International Space Station. So the first thing it does is inform you about their guidelines on video crediting. It's worth noting that when you open that website, it no longer exists, but this particular video is public domain because it's created by NASA. So Johnson Space Center, here is your credit if credit was a thing you wanted. Um, so let's a look. This is not really what I was interested in the video. This is, of course, the very first frame. Let's take a look at a bit of a later frame. So to do that, remember we have the ability to modify the current time. So let's go 36 seconds in. So we're able to hop anywhere we want in the video as long as uh, we know the timestamp associated with it. This is a little bit clunky, of course, uh, because you don't necessarily know what timestamp you want to be at. If you wanted to, you could just grab the frame sequentially. Let's say we just want a dump of all of the data in the file. So the first thing we would do is we would set the current time to be equal to zero. So we rewind the video. I'm going to make this a cell. And then after that, what I would do is I would create a loop while vid dot has frame. And then for each frame in the video, all I'm going to do is store it in a temporary uh, index. So we'll make a four dimensional object pulling off of the read frame. So this will dump the entire video into memory. So this might be a little bit big, but let's see what it does. Oh, I need to create an II variable. I equals I I plus one. Okay. So this should take the entire video and just basically putting it into a giant data cube for us. Given the number of frames, I'm actually a little bit worried this is going to run me out of memory. So uh, I think this isn't really surprising. So a video normally uses codecs to compress the data. So if you actually read all of the raw data out, it gets pretty big. So let's just go ahead, hit control C here. Let's take a look at it. So we got the first 52 frames out of the video. So had we kept going, how many frames are in this thing? There are just about 12 frames per second and it's 72 seconds long. So this is actually, had we kept going here, this would have taken about 700. 700 frames and if we take a look at my memory on my system memory available memory used by matlab 2.3 gigs okay so we may not have wanted to let that keep going it probably would have crashed but you get the basic idea we're able to pull data out and do whatever we like with it basically so this was a method of just reading data right this was sufficient for us to pull data out of the file and we can look at any part of that uh, we had wanted to. So for example, I can uh, take a look at one of those frames. Let's look at the, I don't know, 35th frame. Uh, oh, and Let's squeeze that down because it's complaining about the dimensions. Does that do it for us? Yep. So there is the 35th frame of the video, for example. I'm just gonna show you a quick way to um, display the video uh, on your own in case you would like to do that. So uh, one way to do that is we make a new figure. Uh, I'm going to grab an axis and the idea here is when I make the figure a particular size, I would like it to stay that size. Um, so for example, here. So now what I can do is copy this code down and we'll set the current time 
to the beginning of the video. And now for each, while it has a frame, for each frame, we're going to read that frame into a temporary variable. No need to overwrite things. I don't want my memory to blow up again. And now we're going to use the im show command again. We'll uh, set the parent axis equal to the axis we created above. And then we're going to pause the video and we're going to do this uh, at the frame rate in the video. And the reason that we're doing this is that depending on your computer specs and the size of the file, uh, this thing may display quite a bit faster than um, it was intended. Now, if I do it this way, it will probably actually display a little bit slower than intended because, of course, loading the video and displaying it also took some time. So we're not going to get quite the right frame rate right this way, but I'm not really trying to build a, a full viewer. I just want to demonstrate an idea. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see. Is it running? Yeah, there we go. So this is a, a video file, um, and we're just watching it uh, uh, run through its frames, and it's going to do this until it runs out of frames to display, and then it'll exit the for loop. So you can see that basically we've been able to load frames uh, from video. We've been able to uh, rewind, fast forward to whatever frames we are interested in. And uh, we can pull those out into an array of unsigned integers, which we can then manipulate in other ways. Uh, if you want to do, for example, edge finding, you'll usually want to convert this to a double instead of working with uint8. Um, but basically at this point, the data is in MATLAB and you can do whatever you want with it. I've been exploring a number of uh, different videos that I'll be posting in the near future, uh, a number of different projects where I'm uh, basically doing image analysis in order to identify uh, different shapes within videos uh, that are posted on the internet or that have been produced by uh, acquaintances of mine. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. Uh, we make new videos like this every couple weeks. Uh, if you have comments about this or additional questions, please feel free to comment. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this is a uh, pretty cool video. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, and I will see you guys next time.